Hey Greg, I'm going to put together this uh, for the purpose that we're both building similar build uh, sizes on these printers. And uh, I'm going to show you what I've learned and how I've configured uh, Repetir Host, which is a uh, slicing uh, application that's free. And they also provide firmware for the Arduino that's going to help us out uh, with giving us more compatibility and a little bit more leniency and forgivableness and uh, being able to print. So uh, you'll be able to download Repetir Host and uh, you might want to set yours up with mine because we're building on a 200 millimeter uh, hotbed and we're going to have uh, similar build areas and more or less 400 millimeters in height give or take but I'm setting this up uh, in that with those dimensions in mind. So here's the software it's free and I've got mine configured if you left click and drag in this area, this kind of gives you an overview of your build area. You can use your roller wheel and your mouse to zoom in. And if you've got a middle button, you can press it and kind of pan around. Now you'll see right here in the center, uh, the dot, that's the uh, center of our build area. And that's where uh, if we drop an object into our, our printer, it's going to center up on that position. So uh, to get familiar with this, under config, go to printer settings and here's where, where you're going to establish <clears throat> all the bounds and uh, dimensions of the printer that you're going to use this first page I've not made any changes to it uh, if you go under printer if you want to save these settings or have a variety of different settings let's say for example you determine your build area height is only 350 you would maybe, maybe make a, a setting here called uh, my printer uh, build height 350. Basically you just give it a name of whatever you want. I'll give them kind of a generic name. Under printer you're going to adjust your travel feed. Now from what I understand this is these speeds are when you manually jog your print head so that when you uh, move it manually it travels at these rates um, and this is what I've kind of got a happy medium so that uh, you can move at a significant speed but not so fast that you're uh, you know, why, why move it at uh, 2,500 millimeters a second? Uh, same for Z-axis. Both of these are for manual jogging. Extruder temperature. Now this is just a basic setting. It's not uh, the print, the slice will adjust those rates as it's needed based on uh, slice level thicknesses. Uh, heater bed temperature. Number of extruders. And I've got all these checked in the way that you'll see it. Check extruder bed temperature. That means it's going to make sure that your uh, extruder temperature and bed temperatures are up to uh, their suggested rates or temperatures before a print begins. Remove logs. This is going to remove just unnecessary log file creation on your computer. Um, you can send an estimated time of print duration to your printer display. That way you can get an overview of how many minutes or hours are remaining. Uh, these machines won't have a part position so disable that and then these other three features you can uh, disable the extruder when the job's finished, disable or you know turn off the heater when it's finished and disable all the motors when it's finished. So get your setup just like this. Part position just leave them all at zero. Printer shape under classic you've got the row stock but that's going to show for a, rect a round uh, print uh, heat bed just leave it at classic and adjust these settings like you see. You want your X home to be zero, your Y home to be zero, and your home Z to be max. Now how this works, X min, Y min, X max, Y max, bed left, bed front, is basically your bed dimension. So we're working with a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter bed. Your X min should be half of that in the negative, so it would be minus 100 your X max would be half of your print dimension which would be 200 so that should be 100 and the same for your bed left a minus 100 which is half of 200 on the negative and then your Y min max bed front should be just absolute copies of what you see above so minus 100 100 minus 100 print area 200 that's your print bed hot bed 200 that's your dimensions of your hotbed again and then this is the height your Z height maximum this was one where you may need to adjust it you may need to go down to 300 380 350 however I guess roughly wherever you set your end stops 
or your um, micro switch end stops. Um, advance, I'm going to leave all this alone. And at this point, when you're done, after you've given it a name for your particular settings, click apply, go to each page, click, click apply, click apply, click apply, click apply, and then it's going to save it with this particular setting. Enter OK. So now we've got our, uh, if I'm rolling out with my mouse wheel, you'll see that we've got our um, print area set up that's going to be suitable for what the types of jobs we're going to be working with. So how do we load a job on STL file? Well, go up top under load and I'm going to load uh, some of these that I sent you examples on Facebook. So once you've got it selected, I'm going to click open and you'll see that it'll just drop that right into our print area. And I've made all these under significantly under 200 millimeters because you know the further you get out towards the outside of your print area the more susceptible these are to uh, uh, you know the more exaggeration any calibration is going to be so the further out you get from the center the more likely if your calibrations off um, that you'll get uneven prints so I've got all that now we need to send this to slicer obviously I don't have a printer so I'm not connected you would connect here but under this tab you'll go to slicer and you've got a couple of slicers built in you've got skin forge and sli slick three -er, or slicer or I guess that's the hacker version it's a backwards E using a three but anyway what you do is go into configure this takes a second to load up and once it loads okay you've got a few different parameters here we've got layer parameters and layer height, this is the height of your layers, your first layer, right? Uh, perimeters. And if each one of these that you can uh, put over, you'll get a little help tip that pulls up. How many solid layers to begin with on the top? How many on the bottom? So when you're starting your print, you'll have three solid layers. When you finish it, you'll finish up with three solid layers. Um, I found that. Uh, it can detect any bridging parameters that you may have established over here and you can have it randomize starting points so that let's say for example you're, you're printing something that's round every time it moves up a layer rather than it beginning that layer where it did previously it's going to swing about and start a new layer elsewhere so that you don't have this predictable visible seam where each layer is being started kind of forming a uh, anomaly up one side of your print so I'm checking that um, under infill this is percentage if you were to put one that means hundred percent infill uh, here it would be represent forty percent infill so if you wanted thirty five percent you'd be 0.35 you know what I'm talking about fill pattern that's a type of pattern that your infill is going to produce top and bottom fill patterns uh, may be a little bit different combine infill every X layer so every other layer it would uh, combine only infill were needed I'm going to leave that off solid infill every however many layers solid infill threshold um, I've got mine set just like you see speed this is a uh, 30 millimeter second for the outside the perimeters of your print and for tiny perimeters you obviously want to go slower um, external perimeters, the outside of your build, you may want to be able to go a little bit faster. Infill, you can uh, slow that down, or if it's a solid, if you've got 100% infill, you can uh, obviously change those speeds. Top, support bridging materials, gaps, and all that. Speed for areas that you're not printing. Let's say you've got a, a cube and a, uh, a, a rectangle, and they're setting two inches apart on your hot plate. This is the speed that it would move from one object to the other so you know you can increase your speed build times by increasing that number first layer speed they well, from what I understand your first layer should move slow and at a little bit higher temperature so that you get a better bonding to your uh, hotbed and then just different uh, parameters that you can tweak uh, if you don't tweak these it'll work with all the previous defaults skirt and brim obviously how many loops when you first start a new print how many loops it 
basically extrudes any potentially burnt plastic. Uh, it just kind of gets that material moving out of your print nozzle, any old material out before it starts, moves on to your real print. And then the, obviously the distance from your model that you're printing, so six millimeters off. So if you're putting stuff together, a lot of objects on your bed, you, you might want to reduce that. You know, if they're sitting close, let's say you got a cube and a rectangle, then you're going to print these. If they're two millimeters apart and you put a skirt on there that's six millimeters, what it's going to do is it's going to put that skirt around both of them, not around them individually. And then skirt height, obviously, how high. Um, support material. If you're going to use support material for, you know, let's say you've got an L bracket or an arch, you may want to build support material. I guess that's going to be job specific that you'll tweak these. Notes, you may want to write notes about your settings here and what you've successfully used them with in the past. Output options, on complete, complete individual objects. Let's say you've got um, two of the same identical objects. Remember, they're going to have to be spaced. They're going to have to be spaced apart because that print head, let's say we've got a cube that's uh, 30 uh, millimeters high and we've got another one 30 centimeters high beside it. Well, that print head and all of its mechanical attributes are going to have to clear each uh, clear each one. So if you finished one and you've got another one that's sitting real close, it's not going to be able to finish that other one because the print head and all of its mechanical apparatus would bump into that. So I would never use that. I can't see where that would be. I, th I think this shouldn't even be in the software. Multiple extruders if you've got them. And advance, uh, shoot, this is, I guess, none of it's even necessary. We've got um, filament settings. I'm going to be using a 1.75 and extrusion multiplier. Not certain what this means. I'm going to leave that alone. Temperatures for your extruder for your first layer should be a little bit higher than the rest. And I guess, let's say you've worked out and you figure 225 is going to be your proper temperature that you're print melting your plastic at. Well, your, maybe your first layer might need to be 230, and all subsequent layers might, might need to be less than that. In your bed, I guess if you're going to preheat it so it's nice and hot for your first layer to adhere to, you might be a few degrees higher. And then after that first layer is put down, uh, lower the temperature for your other layers. Cooling. Uh, always keep your fan on that's blowing off on your um, printed materials. Uh, fan speed, I guess you can uh, determine the fan speed for different types of prints for your bridges or disable the fan for the first layer. Um, we'll both have to figure these out, I suppose, on our own. Printer settings, we've got print bed size and first center position. Okay. And offset. I'm not certain what all this means, but I'm going to leave that alone. The G-code flavor, I guess, is just the style, the format that the, when you slice this, uh, there's a few different types, uh, different formatting, I guess maybe different algorithms. I'm going to leave all that by, by its default. And uh, I think you can override your, your slicing uh, parameters here and use uh, the rate at which your, your uh, filament retracts in between moves so that you don't have strings and whatnot. Um, custom G-code, again, I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. An extruder, nozzle, uh, nozzle diameters, I'm going to be using a 0.4. Extruder offset, not, not sure what that is. Retraction length, again, the uh, length that it retracts, that it pulls back that filament between moves. <clears throat> and the, the speed that it, um, you know, the lift Z, my assumption is, is this is how far that uh, print nozzle lifts off the pr current print um, before it does its retraction. That's the speed at which it lifts. Um, you can retract, pull out that, pull that filament up on layer change. I would suggest that. And at this point, each of these, <clears throat> you can click um, save. Here you can give it a. a, a, a you know, let's say ABS, ABS prints. Okay, and we can go here. We can save that as ABS prints. And 
go here and save as. Okay, so now I've got all my settings and they're available in this list anytime I need to go around. I can make sure that they're all selected. And now any of the settings I've made are, are locked in. So we can close that. And now at this point, if you needed to move that, you can right click and move it and adjust it. Get a good look at it. Make sure you're in as centered as you can be. Okay. And once you're done, go ahead and click slice. It's generating that G code and saving it on your computer. And I guess this takes less time or more time depending on the quantity of objects you have and then all the uh, different slices that are involved. And it's slicing is based on your slice thickness, your millimeter or centimeter. No, I guess it would be millimeter thickness. And here what it does is it gives you where, where was that setting at? Uh, somewhere in here I saw it earlier. Yeah, right, right here. It gives you your printing time based on the settings that you've made in Slicer. So this um, particular print of everything there is going to take 6 hours 34 minutes. Now, what you see here is it's showing all the different lines for all the different layers of, of, of each slice as it prints. And something that's cool is, is you can click Show Layer Range, okay? And here, if you just drag this bar to the right, it's showing you each particular layer as it were to be printed, which I think something neat. You can actually zoom in on that and, and get a better look at it. But this would be the com complete object printed. If you just drag that on down, you can see it's cutting back through. We've got some stuff over on this side. I guess it's a little lower, so it's already printed. So as I go down or up, you'll see now it's other pieces are moving up, continuing to be printed, while these have already been printed. So I'll go back down, and you can see how it's working on everything. You can see all the different head moves. That's what those vector lines represent. And then here you can see that skirt. It was printed all the way around our entire build. Now, when you when you put this together, obviously that skirt. Let's say as you said, it's going to be six millimeters away from your object. If your object that you're printing on your 200 millimeter print area, if this skirt extends off of that, you're, you're going to have to reduce that skirt size um, or just eliminate the skirt itself. Maybe print something. I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. So, but I hope this helps. I know uh, I've watched dozens of tutorials, read lots of uh, different tech reports, and um, think I got this understood. You can also, from under config, load that firmware. Of course, you're going to have to be connected to to your printer. Then you go to config firmware, and at this point, the firmware you can download from the Repair uh, website. You can configure all the different settings, which are very similar to what we've walked through here. But you can get uh, pre-configured settings or tweak them on their website, download them, and then you, when you configure uh, your settings to flash your Arduino with, basically you'll upload, download that file to your computer and then browse for it here and then you would just send it to your firmware and it would be updated or any of these settings that you've made you can upload to your firmware so that you, you got some consistency so hope it helped man good luck I can't wait till you get yours up and all my parts are on the way in so talk to you online bye